Mongo database creates a new open source license and Red Hat and Debian will have none of it. So what's the story? It looks like MongoDB or Mongo database has created their own server side public license that they are now going to use. So an article came out on TechCrunch and what it says is very interesting. The issue here is that MongoDB, Mongo database is unhappy that many companies, especially the larger companies are using the non GP, well, excuse me, not non GPL, non SQL database and they are offering services based on the database, altering the source code and not providing copies of the source code according to the GPL version three license. So the specific change that they've made that rankles Red Hat and Debian and other developers and other distributions essentially says that if you use the source code as a service for downstream customers, you have two choices. You either must provide the source code, which was also in the AGPL version three, or you must buy a commercial license. So why did Red Hat and Debian complain? Well, Red Hat actually came out with a comment and said, we feel that this particular license punishes a certain segment of users. Therefore, we will not bundle MongoDB with our Red Hat version eight. How big of an issue is that? Well, of course you could always download the source code and compile it yourself and more than likely somebody will compile the source code and make RPMs for Mongo database and make it available so you'll be able to include those if you need them possibly even get it directly from Mongo database website itself but at issue is the requires commercial license. So there may be some companies that are not huge that are using Mongo database with the current version, they're okay. But if they upgrade to the newer version, they would be in trouble if they do not provide the source code. Now, ironically, either way with the AGPL version three or the SSPL that Mongo database has created, they both are essentially the same, except for that one issue about purchasing a commercial license. Now you may ask, why is Mongo database doing this? They're an open source co company anyway. The reason is something that I've seen with other open source companies where they will offer a basic product that's truly open source and then they'll build something on top of it that is commercial and licensed privately. So you can take the open source, compile it yourself, set it up, whether it's backup services or whatever you're going to do. Um, but if you want the high end, usually it's a graphical interface or something like that. They want you to pay for it. Well, Mongo is seeing all these huge companies like Amazon profiting off of their software, but they're not making any money off of it. So they want to try to force users to purchase that commercial license so they can alter the source code and pay for it, but not have to release that source code. So essentially what they're saying is virtually all regular users who are currently using the community server, nothing changes because the changes in the license don't really apply to them, especially if you're releasing the source code as you should. They go on here in the article to say, while the SSPL isn't all that different from the GNU GPL with all the usual freedoms to use, modify and redistribute the code, the SSPL explicitly states that anybody who wants to offer Mongo DB as a service or really any other software that uses this license needs to either get a commercial license or open source the open source the service to give back to the community which is quite typical for open source licensing I see two problems here one it's kind of like the United States in law 
they seem to think that when somebody is breaking the law, the best thing to do is create a new law that said the same thing as the old law, but is more extreme. Now, at the beginning of this article, I don't know if you noticed, it said that MongoDB is a bit miffed that some cloud providers, especially in Asia, are taking its open source code and offering a hosted commercial version of its database to their users without playing by the open source rules. If the majority of the providers are in Asia and they haven't followed the AGPL version 3 license, why would they care about the SSPL license? The answer is they won't. So applying this new license is not going to make other users in other countries necessarily adhere to their licensing structure, even in the United States. We've seen time and time again where companies will use open source, especially with embedded operating systems, do whatever they want, like in routers or drones and other types of devices that have embedded Linux in it, modify the source code and never release it. So how are you going to get these companies to say, you know, you're right, we should buy a commercial license from you? It's nearly impossible. So that's the first problem I see. Well, I should say issue. The second issue is if you truly see an abuse of your licensing and you know it's happening and can prove it, perhaps your remedy is better served in court civilly than it is trying to use a new license to get companies to buy your program. So there is a document Mondo DBA created called the Server Side Licensing FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, and one of the questions here is very interesting. Why are you changing the license for MongoDB? Well, they go on to discuss everything we just talked about, but then they add on the bottom, Obviously, this new license helps our business, but it is also important for the MongoDB community. MongoDB has invested approximately $300 million in research and development, which is extensive. But the first part is it's going to help our business. I don't know if they're running in the negatives, but they are a for-profit business with open source software that expects to get a return on their R and D. We have a conflict of interest here. We see this happen with other companies that release source code and they somehow want to put a spin on it and make some money off of it. And that's exactly what's happening here. That is why I say the better remedy would probably have been to go to court and file civil suits with those companies that they know are infringing. And it's not that difficult to prove. You're using the source code, you've compiled it and altered it. You're making it publicly available as a service to downstream customers. And you have not provided a copy of the source code that others can use freely available. This license I don't think is going to do for them what they hope. The other thing about the license, um, there is a document available on Mongo's website here and I'll provide all these links in the description below. And it, it normally would not be something I would really be concerned about because, you know, if you look at the GNU uh, public license version 3 or version 2, they don't change that often and it takes a larger consensus of the open source community to make changes to those licenses. But here is my concern. MongoDB Incorporated may publish revised and or new versions of the server-side public license from time to time. Such new versions will be similar in spirit to the present version, but may differ in detail to address new problems or concerns. So we now have what is essentially a privatized open source license that could be altered at any time for said future versions. So what I'm concerned about is if these companies that are for profit publish these private open source licenses that can be changed any time could erode the control 
and centralization of the GPL licenses and mean that there could be many open source licenses. I mean, I know there are several open source licenses out there already, but do we really need every company to have its own open source license that technically speaking, if they couldn't enforce the AGPL version 3, why do they think they're going to be able to enforce this license? So to me, it's better to have a open source public license like the GPL that's built by consensus and is changed very rarely compared to different versions of public licensing that vary depending on what the company wants to do. It's a problem. I don't know what the end outcome will be. Will companies reduce their use of GPL licensing and other forms? of licensing that's already available and start creating their own let's hope not if you enjoyed watching this video do the usual like and subscribe and if you get a chance drop me a comment tell me what you think are you concerned as always thank you for watching i'll see you next time on fast gadgets this video was made possible with support from viewers like you if you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.